Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. Today's video is about a subject that is a bit controversial among Morse code uh, practitioners. What should you use when you are learning? Is it the straight key or the paddles? I know I'm going to take some flack for this one, guys, but uh, first let's see uh, what exactly uh, do they do, how they function, the uh, straight key and the paddles. So I've plugged in my uh, straight key here. This is my ICOM uh, IC251E, a uh, great radio, by the way, to uh, pick up used on eBay, all mode uh, VHF. So it's not transmitting, the Vox is off, uh, I have a dummy load anyways. I love straight keys, guys. It's They are really elegant, simple devices. Basically, uh, it's just a switch. When I make contact, it just sends the tone, and that's all there is to it, really. It's extremely simple. Now, if I send, let's say, uh, what I said at the beginning of my videos, VVVDEGIL, So it's all in the timing. Uh, the difficulty with a straight key is that you have to time correctly the dots and the dashes, the spaces between them, the spaces between the words. By the way, the uh, letters, uh, the letter V and three Vs is uh, what uh, uh, telegraphists, you know, uh, telegraph operators were sending to actually uh, wake up <laughs> the other guy at the end of the line. So it just kind of grabs your attention. That's what I was told. So essentially, uh, VVV means a message is coming. Uh, DE means from in French, and uh, it's based on French. So VVV, uh, D-E-G-I-L, uh, means a message is coming from Gilles. Well, I thought I'd plug in the antenna, just checking. <laughs> Unfortunately, not many people uh, use uh, CW Morse code on VHF and that's really too bad. I think it's a very underused mode and it's it has a lot uh, for it and uh, I wish more people were using it. See I don't hear anything but I'm gonna try calling. Hey you never know. The chances of getting someone are very low. A lot of people will tell you that you should start learning with a straight key. Now, you have to wonder why that is. Uh, there has to be a, a you know reasonable uh, argument about that. I think it's mostly based on tradition, really. Uh, again, those are beautiful uh, instruments, uh, simple, elegant. I've said it. Um, I love them, but. Is it better to start? Uh, is that going to be uh, hindering your progress or is it going to help you? Now we're going to see the iambic paddles. The iambic paddles, uh, the difference is that the tone is not made by the key. The tone is made by the keyer here in the Elcraft K1, uh, probably my favorite radio. Basically, the dots are generated automatically. And the dashes here on the right side. Now if I press both at the same time. So you can send uh, characters very quickly, very fast and very easily. See, I don't have to uh, let go of the paddles every time. If I press on, say, the dashes and then I, I put a dot in there, I don't have to let go of the dash uh, paddle. So the timing is done automatically. You don't have to worry about the length of the dots, dashes. Uh, the only thing you have to worry about is the spaces between the letters and between the words. I'm going to change speed here to uh, show you the difference. So we're going to go to, uh, let's say, 12 words per minute. And now I'm going to go much faster, let's say 22. See, the radio is generating that. I'm not doing that. Personally, I started with the iambic paddle. 
simply because uh, the radio you saw, the K1, is the first radio I ever built. Uh, well, actually, I think it was the second, but uh, I had the uh, DC20B. Anyway, that had a key uh, as well, so I had to use the iambic paddle. And I think it helped me a great deal. I think it's better than a straight key. <laughs> yes, a lot of people are going to disagree, but let me tell you why. It's all about the timing. When you start learning uh, something like Morse code, it's really hard to get the timing right. It's like learning music. You have a hard time getting those dots and dashes to be the correct length. It's not easy. So today you hear a lot of people on the bands that are unable to, to have good timing. It's very hard to understand them. So you really want to have good timing. What happens when you learn with an iambic uh, paddles is that, uh, with iambic paddles, is that your brain gets used to that rhythm and uh, the timing and you get it just right because you're used to hear it like that because that's what the radio generates. So it gets imprinted in your brain. And I'm telling you, when I first picked up a straight key, I thought it was going to be difficult. I thought I would have a hard time with the timing, but not at all, because my brain was already used to that rhythm. And I picked up the straight key and I started sending and it was just spot on, spot on for the timing. So I had no difficulty at all adapting from the paddles to the straight key. I think that what happens is that the straight key simply is just harder at the beginning because you don't have that timing, you have to work on it. Now, is it necessary to go through the, uh, the pains of uh, you know, trying to send the code properly? And is it going to be better imprinted in your brain because you're using it? There is an argument for that. But in my personal experience, now, I'm, you know, of course, it can be different from different people. But for me, it was much simpler to start with the uh, iambic paddles. And because simply uh, the timing was just imprinted in my brain, I didn't have to make any efforts to have that happen. And there's nothing wrong with making less efforts to learn something. Anyway, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> now, it doesn't mean you should, uh, you should not consider one or the other. Uh, I think you really should use both because they're both uh, really great. And uh, it's, it's, it's good to, to know how to use both of them. Now, should you start again with the straight key or the iambic paddles? Uh, it's still your choice. Some people will do better with a straight key. Some people will do better with paddles. I think paddles have the advantage. There is no need really to add extra difficulty uh, because uh, you know you should be using a tool that's older and is more traditional. Uh, there's no need for that. Even if the straight key, uh, let's face it, is cooler. Last piece of advice before we go, uh, something I found out uh, is uh, how much should you uh, practice uh, between listening, copying and sending. And my opinion on that is that you should spend uh, practically uh, all your time on receiving. Because once you have, once again, that rhythm, that music in the ear, sending will come naturally. So don't spend too much time on sending good code. Uh, I mean, you have to send good code, but <laughs> if you can copy code properly, you will be able to send code properly as well. It's gonna be much easier. So I'd say 80% listening, 20% sending. And personally, I didn't spend, I practically spent no time practicing sending whatsoever. And I, I send better than I copy today. So, all right, I hope you're all well and healthy and uh, have a good one. <laughs>